Now, a WIFF News 4 sports special. Road to the title. If it's a story you want, look no further than L.A. Sunshine, sand, stars. And tonight, college football's biggest stage, the 2023 CFP National Championship. The Georgia Bulldogs want the script to remain the same after their first title in more than four decades. People have asked the question, how does it feel to be hunted? We will not be hunted at the University of Georgia. I can promise you that. The Bulldogs redirecting the bull's eye going 14-0 for the first time. This is what we set out to do this year. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of people who doubted us. But Hollywood loves its underdogs. And TCU is straight from central casting from five and seven last fall to the sports final two. Not a lot of people really thought you'd be in that position, um, but I think continuing to believe in yourself and the guys around you. Tinseltown couldn't write an ending any better than this. Only one story left this season, a little more than 30 minutes from now, 23,030 miles from here, the national championship game in SoFi Stadium. And from coast to coast, this is Road to the Title. Thanks, as always, for joining us. I'm Mark Whiteman. That is Julia Morris. We will be bouncing back and forth tonight, and we'll get out to Julia in Inglewood, California, in just a moment. But we begin tonight with the Bulldogs. Georgia wiped away four decades of frustration last January, triumphing over the tide to hoist their first national title since 1980. The conversation since has been, would they do it again everywhere except in the Bulldogs locker room? Georgia lost a record 15 players to the NFL draft last April, and they just reloaded. Their 14 wins have come by a Division I best average margin of 25 points per game. The offense has been explosive. The defense once more among the nation's best. But the phrase title defense, not on their radar. We've never said repeat or defend we hunt and that's simple for us we want to stay on the aggressive side of things you know this team is not that team and next year's team won't be this year's team so they're completely independent of each other just like every game is independent of the previous we don't dwell in the rearview mirror you know we, we try to focus on what's ahead and they're hoping what's ahead tonight, one more red and black confetti shower before this season is through. Julia, Georgia's quite familiar with the stage, while TCU is just getting comfortable with it. Yeah, Mark, since the college football playoffs started in 2014, we've seen the blue bloods of the sport competing on the big stage, but not this year. TCU is a true Cinderella story, and the Horn Frogs say they have a quiet confidence heading into tonight's game. TCU head coach Sonny Dykes has taken this program to historic heights in his first year at the helm. And by doing so, the Horn Frogs have proven a lot of people wrong. TCU was unranked to start the season and picked to finish seventh in the Big 12 Conference. They've had stretches of dominance, beating their first four opponents by an average of 26 points this year. But they've also faced adversity, winning six games this season after trailing by double digits in the second half. Their Fiesta Bowl win over Michigan, also a thriller. And with it, the Horn Frogs became the first Big 12 team to win, off, win a playoff game in the college football playoff era. This week, Dyke said one word best describes his team, resilient. These guys just don't quit, you know, and it's it's been weird. They really believe in each other. They don't get too high. They don't get too low. When you find people or, or a team that does that, confidence is at the, at the root of that. You know, and the reason they don't get too low is because they know they're going to have an opportunity to fight back or they believe that things are going to equalize or they believe that um, they're going to figure out a way to get it done. TCU's last national championship win was all the way back in 1938. Well, more to come in Road to the Title. We handed our mic this week to Bulldogs defensive lineman Nazir Stackhouse and let him interview his teammates. You'll see that straight ahead. Plus, we take a look back at Georgia quarterback Stetson Bennett's six-year college journey ahead of his final collegiate game. Welcome back to Road to the Title. Georgia is getting ready to play under the bright lights in the shadows of Hollywood. 
In less than an hour, the Bulldogs will face off in the national championship game against TCU. It's the big stage, and that's when Bulldogs quarterback Stetson Bennett is at his best. If you love a good underdog story, Georgia quarterback Stetson Bennett is one of the best in college football. 64 yards for Stetson Bennett. They call him the mailman, and for the last two years, he's delivered. The former walk-on led Georgia to a national championship last season, the Bulldogs' first since 1980. I can't describe the feeling. You know, I, I tried not to put, you know, Bulldog Nation on my shoulders um, because I can't carry that weight. When Keeley caught that pick, and I didn't even see him score a touchdown, I, I just saw him kiss the pick, and I was like, I just started crying. I just, it just, the emotion just came over me. This year has been his first full season as the Bulldogs starter, a job that took him six years to earn. Football, growing up, it was the thing that you were best at. You know, you thought you were pretty good in your hometown, right? And then you walk on to college and, and, and come and find out that, hey, this thing that you said you're best at in the, in the world, that you spend the most time at in the world, that you care about in the world, well, it ain't good enough to play here. A native of Blackshear, Georgia, Bennett grew up rooting for the Bulldogs. He was a good high school player, but not good enough to earn a scholarship at his dream school. He joined the Bulldogs as a walk-on in 2017, serving as the scout team quarterback. You know, next man up, just being prepared throughout the week, so when you do get a chance on Saturday, you can play well. After that season, Bennett transferred to Jones Junior College in Mississippi. He finished the year ranked 12th in the country in passing yards at the JUCO level. Georgia came calling again, and Bennett was back in Athens in 2019. Never the team starter, an injury to JT Daniels last year opened the door. Bennett started for the Dogs in their second game of the season, and four of his first five passes were touchdowns. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous. I couldn't eat pregame meal um, because I, I mean, I guess I say I don't, you know, care about what other people think, but. And I don't really, but I mean, I was nervous. I was like, I, I need to play well. Daniels returned as the team starter for the next two games, but by early October, Bennett was the guy. He led Georgia to three wins over three ranked opponents in his first three starts, and the Bulldogs finished the regular season undefeated. But in his first SEC championship game as Georgia's starter, Bennett struggled against Alabama, throwing two interceptions. Critics began to question whether a walk-on would be able to lead his team to the top of the mountain. I don't wallow in it. I don't sit in it. I don't um, think about it. All I'm thinking about is beating Michigan. Um, and being the best quarterback I can be for my teammates. Georgia responded in a big way after its loss to Bama. The Bulldogs dominated Michigan in the Orange Bowl, and Bennett was named MVP. I didn't go out there and play you know, well today to, in spite of people. I came out there and played well and worked hard throughout the few weeks we had off um, because my teammates needed me to do that, and we needed that to win. He was just as good in the national championship game, earning offensive MVP honors and leading the Bulldogs to their first title in more than four decades. I think that Coach Smart and the whole team has been preaching the whole year. Resiliency, toughness, composure, you know, connection. And I knew that those guys beside me had my back and I had their back too. This year, Bennett led the Bulldogs to their second straight undefeated regular season. A few weeks ago in Atlanta, he reminded everyone what he can do on the big stage. He totaled four touchdowns in the Bulldogs' Peach Bowl win over Ohio State. They're going to be where they're going to be, and, and they're going to win their matchups. And so all I've got to do is get the ball. Um, so I'd say that slows my heart rate down. Bennett was also named a Heisman finalist this year, the first Georgia quarterback to ever be named a finalist for the award given to the most outstanding player in college football. He also won the Burlesworth Trophy, which is given to the best player in college football who started his career as a walk-on. After receiving that award, Bennett thanked his family, coaches, and teammates for helping him become the player and person he is today, an underdog that became a national champion. And this is a pretty cool connection. Football is in Bennett's blood. His grandfather, Buddy Bennett, played quarterback at the University of South Carolina from 1958 to 1960. Mark?
Well, thank you. What a ride it has been. Stetson Bennett, the ultimate underdog story, and you can say the same about his opponent tonight, TCU. This is maybe the moment that best sums up the magical ride that has been the Horn Frog season. Late November, with no timeouts, trailing Baylor in the final minute, TCU gets their offense off the field and special teams on the field, all in less than 10 seconds, and executes the fire drill field goal as time expired to keep their perfect season alive. Five wins this fall, coming by one score or less, but if they started out as a Cinderella story, they have very much proved they belong. A D1 leading six, one, six wins against ranked opponents. And it has been Max Duggan who has helped carve the way. The senior totaled 40 touchdowns this year en route to winning the Davey O'Brien Award as the nation's top QB. Duggan had never played in a bowl game before last week's semifinal. Only four players on TCU ever had. Sonny Dykes hasn't been afraid to admit this is all brand new for his guys, but he's not worried about the stage being too big. I know it's going to be a big challenge for us, but, but our guys have never backed down uh, for challenges, and they have a lot of confidence in themselves and in our program and what we're trying to do, and uh, we'll go out and play good football Monday night and see what happens. I think it's exciting to be able to play the champs, you know, and not a lot of people get that opportunity to, to, to knock somebody off and, and compete against those guys. I think a lot of people have, have doubted us, but I, I think a great thing about our guys and, and this program is that we've never listened to anything outside of our, our walls or anything outside of our program. Duggan and Bennett, both Heisman finalists last month. Duggan finished second in voting, Bennett fourth. Both put up big-time numbers this season, more than 3,500 yards through the air, and each can make plays with their feet, eat eight rushing scores for both QBs. We are halfway home on road to the title still to come. What exactly is a horned frog anyways? Well, we went to the Greenville Zoo to find out, but when we return, the trip of a lifetime for a mother and daughter from the upstate. Stay with us. You're watching Road to the Title. Tonight's national championship has created a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for an upstate mother, mother-daughter duo. Our Rashad Williams takes us on the cross-country journey. A household united by blood. I'm just so excited that the stars aligned for these two teams to come together like this. Is also a household divided by two teams. She's going to want her daughter to be happy and win, but at the same time, she's a full-through bulldog and always has been. <laughs> Rebecca McNichols and her daughter Anna Robinson love some football. Love You're going to be barking and I'm going to be <laughs> go frogs the whole time. But Rebecca is a 1985 graduate of UGA and was around campus following the dog's 1980 national championship win. Anna, on the other hand, is currently a senior at TCU. The odds of us actually making it to the championship and at on my senior year as mother-daughter is pretty incredible to me. One or two bags. As soon as TCU won the game, uh, we were booking flights and getting a hotel room. <laughs> With help from the unbiased man of the house sporting both teams. We're going to California. The mother-daughter duo were off to catch a flight on Sunday to California. They're on their way. And after nearly 10 hours of delays Sunday night, The two finally hopped off the plane at LAX early Monday morning. Woo! They couldn't predict the flight delays, but they're predicting the outcome of the game. 64. 64? 40. Let's say 40 to 35. They both say this historic girls trip is a once in a lifetime opportunity to show support not only for their teams. Rip Ram, Bazu, Rao Rao, TCU, go Frogs! Woo! Go dog, sick em. Woof, 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 woof. But support for each Woo! other. At the end of the day, who says a horn frog and a bulldog can't get along? I'm just glad both teams won and they're here. We're so excited. That was our Rashad Williams reporting. Great story, Rashad, and a trip those two will never forget. Julie, I know you have enjoyed the sights between all the work, and I'm sure the Bulldogs have as well. 
Yeah, Mark, Los Angeles is home to Hollywood, beautiful beaches, and aside from today, mostly sunny weather. This city really has everything you would want leading up to college football's biggest game of the year. And for a lot of Georgia players, this is their first time visiting the state of California. But for Georgia running back Kendall Milton, this is home. I caught up with Milton during media day this week and asked him about his homecoming and what it would mean for Georgia to win another title. Well, Kendall, what's it like to be back in your home state getting ready for the big game? It, it definitely means a lot just being able to come back to California and be close to a lot of the family that and friends that, you know, saw me growing up watching me when I first started playing football. So being able to be close to them and have my family be able to make a short little drive to the game, you know, definitely means a lot because they're used to making those four hour plane trips across the country. So, you know, they're already in L.A. right now. So it's just a blessing to be able to be so close to home. What are you most looking forward to about Monday's game? I would say just one last ride with the seniors. These are guys that uh, I've come very close to Stetson Bennett, Kenny McIntosh, Kiers, you know, those are only to name a few, but those are guys that kind of took me under their wing when I first came in as a young freshman. So, you know, I'm just looking forward to one last ride, uh, senior day. That was when I realized how much it meant to me because, you know, that's an emotional time when you see everybody, you know, it kind of hits home that this is coming to an end. But, you know, I'm just looking forward to giving my all to send them out the right way. What stands out to you about TCU and how do you plan to attack that defense come Monday night? TCU, they're a defense. They're fast. They're physical. You know, they stay true to who they are. And I feel like this is a well-matched game just across the board. There's a lot of good matchups. And I'm just excited for this whole, you know, this is the biggest game of the year. The two top teams. So I'm just excited for one last competition. It's been more than a decade since a team has won back-to-back -back national championships. What would it mean for you and this group to put your names in the history books? It would mean the most. This is a group that, you know, we work our butts off every single day. Uh, if anybody is around at our practices, they can see, you know, how tough our practices are, how tough the workouts are, how tough everything that we do, you know, is. And Kirby Smart, he makes it known that, you know, if you want to be different, you have to do different. And I feel like, you know, this team has earned the ability to go back to back. And, you know, basically everybody on this team was on the team last year. So, you know, everybody's working. Everybody is just doing what they can. And, you know, it's really a blessing to be in this situation again. We are getting closer to kickoff here at SoFi Stadium, but before you change the channel, we gave our mic to one Georgia player this week and had him ask his teammates hard-hitting questions. Plus, we break down what exactly a horn frog is. Stick with us. You're watching Road to the Title. It's really like an unreal feeling, I ain't gonna lie. Um, but I'm blessed, you know, I'm glad to be in this position. You know, I work hard for this, you know, I feel very deserving of it. Um, the whole team, we work hard for this all off season, you know, people doubting us and stuff like that. You know, we just always stay focused on what we needed. We knew what we wanted to do. Gaffney High School product Tyree and Ingram Dawkins hoping the Bulldogs lift another trophy tonight. Ingram Dawkins part of a Georgia defense that is limiting opponents to 14 points a game this year. Another Georgia defensive lineman, Nazir Stackhouse, not only a great football player, but he has a personality made for TV. We gave Stackhouse our WIFF News 4 mic during media day this week and let him interview his teammates. Hi, everybody. I'm Manager Stackhouse. I'm here with WYFF News 4, and I'm going to go interview some of my teammates. Let's go. <laughs> Favorite movie? Ooh, that's a tough one. I'm a big, like, Avengers guy. I love I'm Avengers. Superheroes. I love Avengers. But, like, Spider-Man, that's also really good. Yeah. I don't know. I'm more of, like, like, there's a lot of movies out there that I love seeing. So, like, Avengers, Marvel movies are great. Who is the most famous person you know? Doesn't have to be someone who's on TV or it can be anybody. You! I'm the most famous person you know? Most famous person I know. It's probably that man yeah, right Kirby's there. Yeah, Kirby's right there. It, 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 it probably is that man right there. Favorite pregame meal? That we always have like that steak beforehand. Uh, yeah. But a big thing I'm on is I always drink like two Red Bulls before every game. Two Red, big, two two Red, Red, Red Bulls? Yeah, that's part of the meal. It's part of the tradition, it's part of the meal. It's a hard game if I don't get those Red Bulls. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Oh, off the rip. Didn't even give it, didn't even give it time. Cats? 
or dogs? Dogs. Dogs. 100%. Not a big cat guy. <laughs> dogs or cats? I have to go with dogs, of course. Well, why not cats? We're both dogs, so like, come yeah, on. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, we're both dogs, right? I got two. You see, I got like. like, like <laughs> And every time I have an interaction with a cat, I always end up getting scratched or hissed at or anything. So, man, I'm gonna go with dogs 100%. Oh, yeah. And for what it's worth, Stackhouse said he has dogs and cats and loves both equally. It was awesome to see another side of the players during media day this week. This Georgia group certainly doesn't seem stressed as it tries to make history. The Bulldogs are trying to join Clemson and LSU to become the third team in the playoff era to go 15-0. and We'll find out soon enough if they'll get their Hollywood ending. Mark? Julia, great work. Have some fun tonight. All right, Ugga, wake up. It is almost kickoff. Everyone knows about one of America's most beloved Bulldogs, but what exactly is a horned frog? TCU's unique mascot is one of one, but the name is just a bit misleading. You'll find all manners of faces and feet among the reptiles and amphibians at the Greenville Zoo. You might even spot a horned frog. Sort of. What you're looking at right now is called a Solomon Island leaf frog. And when you look above its eyes, you'll see little points that look kind of like horns on there. But you won't find this horned frog, or that one either, which isn't really a frog or a toad at all. That is actually a type of lizard that is native to Texas and other parts of the Great Plains and the Western U.S. and into Mexico. TCU's misnomer mascot, the horned frog, is a Texas horned lizard. Part of the reason why they were called horned frogs is because they have very round, kind of fat-looking bodies and very short tails. And so somebody a long time ago probably thought they more resembled frogs than they did lizards. Some fun facts about our spiky new friends. They're the state reptile of Texas. Mostly eat ants, shoot blood out of their eyes as a defense mechanism, and it prefers camouflage first. But the football team that shares its name will be front and center tonight. There you go. Actually, a horned lizard. That is it, and that's all for Julia Morris and all of our hardworking team. I'm Mark Whiteman. Thanks for joining us for Road to the Title. We'll see if the Bulldogs can go back-to-back -to -back tonight. Enjoy the game.